I think we're live. I do believe we're live. Oh, it feels like it's been forever. Hello, everybody. Hold on, there's a little dance music going on right now. There's a little dance music going on. Everyone should be dancing. Let's get up the energy. Hi, everybody. It is Thursday night. And tonight, we're gonna talk about something that I've promised for so long. We're gonna talk about skincare. You guys keep messaging me, asking me about it. So tonight we're gonna talk about it. I have a special guest tonight. So quý vị khỏe không? Hmm? Quý vị biết không? Lina bận. Bận mà, I mean like sick. I can't remember the last time I was that sick. <clears throat> Laying in bed, still coughing a little bit. So, um, so hôm nay Lina mong là the special guest that nói chuyện nhiều hơn Lina. Okay, so we have lots to talk about. If you're watching from the United States, you know what to do. Give me a one. I want to see a one. If you're watching from Vietnam, why, good morning, Vietnam. Let me see a two from you, Vietnam. I know we're going live on Facebook. We're going live on YouTube. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I'm going to turn the music down. And I'm going to introduce you to our special guest today. Okay. Although I should have made her dance. I should have I should have made her dance. Um, hôm nay mình sẽ nói về skincare. Rất là nhiều người là message tại vì Lina đã hứa từ lâu rồi nha. Đã hứa từ l- rất là lâu rồi đó. À, nhưng mà cứ là cái scheduling nó, nó không có được uh, matching. Rồi, rồi xong Lina bệnh. Bệnh mà bệnh là giống như là lay in bed all day luôn đó. Bệnh nặng luôn đó. And bây giờ vẫn còn ho. Uh, but I know that you want to talk about skin care. Because why? Who doesn't want to stay young? Who doesn't want to look good, right? Um, and um, my special guest tonight, you may recognize her. She uh, is beautiful. She was born and raised in Texas. Người Việt Nam nhưng mà sân, sân tại uh, Mỹ, tại Dallas, Texas và lớn lên tại Mỹ. Nhưng mà cổ ca nhạc Việt rất là hay. She's beautiful and she's very smart. So aside from singing on Asia, which you may have seen her, she's also a registered nurse. And um, she has worked on my face. I trust her completely. And so today we are going to talk about skincare. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to welcome the beautiful Kathleen Gatlin Nguyen, right? Did I, did I get that right? <laughs> yes, hello. Yeah, Kathleen. she's on, finally. Như vậy là em xanh tại Mỹ, em lớn lên tại Mỹ, em nói được tiếng Việt không? À, dạ em nói được nhưng mà dạo này em nói hơi ít cho nên không có nói được hay <cười> yeah. Nhưng mà em xanh tại đây mà nói được như vậy Nhưng mà em ca được tiếng Việt mà phải không? Yes Very nice, very good And you know it makes a big difference As you know on my YouTube channel I teach English And the one thing people say uh, How can I be better at English? What do I tell them? You have to practice Thì mm-hmm. the same thing with Vietnamese phải không? Em thấy, em cảm thấy, like, uh, sometimes when you spend a lot of time with other Vietnamese, what happens to your Vietnamese? You get better. <laughs> it gets better. And then, when you don't spend that time, when you don't speak it every day, what happens to your Vietnamese? It gets worse. It gets worse. And that's, ex- <laughs> and that's exactly my situation right now, because I'm yes. a lot around a lot of Americanized people, so I don't yep. speak Vietnamese as much lately. Mm-hmm. I understand. So, but but the fact that you speak it at all is very impressive. So, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I I want to share. I love sharing with people. Like if I find something I like, hoặc là nhiều người hỏi Lina là, ô tại sao chị năm mươi mấy tuổi rồi mà sao nhìn thấy trẻ vậy? No plastic surgery. I don't want to do plastic surgery. I want to mình làm những cái gì mà uh, tiếng Anh kêu là non-invasive, right? Mình không có muốn là mẫu sẽ. You want to do something um, là more natural. Làm, right, more natural. Nhẹ nhẹ. And, and the best thing you can do is actually to take care of your skin like from the beginning. 
À, nhưng mà chị rất là chị rất là là dở là tại vì năm chục tuổi mới bắt đầu wear sunscreen khi đó mình mới thấy là I should have listened to my mom that's when that's when I learned that so let's talk about skincare um, first of all because we have a lot of Asian viewers is there anything about Asian skin like is there a common problem a lot of um, Asians have especially Asian females Uh, yeah, so because of our skin color, because of the fact that we are Asian, we produce more melanin and melanin is, um, it, it's, it's creates like these pigment cells in our skin. And if we don't wear sunscreen, if we're out in the sun a lot, then this, these, uh, melanin cells will absorb the UV rays from the sun and in to protect itself and its DNA, it's going to absorb that and then the pigments are going to darken. So for Asian people and darker skin tones, it's super, super important to be wearing sunscreen. Um, mm -hmm. The pigment is what we have, right? So we we're, we all have pigment. We're not just black and white. We have color. But hyperpigmentation is when you have this overproduction of melanin that causes the darker appearance on your skin. Okay. And I know that like tiếng Việt mình cứ kêu là nám. Phải không? Nám the spots. Yeah. Nám no, yeah. No, I, yes. Oh, I I've, I've never heard that. Um Yeah, the Okay, so but there are like different causes and different types, right? Yes. Uh, so there's three types of hyperpigmentation. Number one, and what I see actually in a lot of my Asian patients is melasma. Uh, melasma is patches of dark spots on your skin that's more apparent on your cheek area, your upper lip, your chin, and even the forehead. Melasma is due to hormonal imbalances. So it can be triggered by, you know, your birth control or um, pregnancy, um, menopause, and um, thyroid dysfunction, right? Because that has to do with hormones. And it can also be genetic. Uh, a lot of my patients always, uh, well, not always, but some of them are like, well, my mom doesn't have it. My sister doesn't have it, but I'm the only one that has it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's just a lot of varying factors. Um, but melasma is one. Number two for hyperpigmentation would be your PIH, which is short for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. That comes from dark spots, comes from trauma, burns, inflamed mm -hmm. blemishes. So, so if you have breakouts and you're picking at it, you're squeezing your pimple, you're squeezing at your acne, you can pigment your skin because of the trauma that you're causing. Um, See, I always well as, thought I always thought of those as like um, scars. Is it like that? Because like, for instance, if I get a mosquito bite, mm -hmm. I'll get a dark spot on there and it'll stay there for years. Yeah, I'm scratching so, it and it, and you know what I mean? Is that kind of the same thing where it's it's um, damage to your skin? Right. So scarring is more like a pitted um, hole kind of, you know, it's just like not even. When you're talking about PIH pigmentation, um, like for example, like what you just said about mosquito bite, it's caused by trauma. You're itching at it. You keep scratching it. You're, you're irritating your skin and from trauma you pigment. Right. Okay. And then the third type of hyperpigmentation would be your photo damage. So that comes in the forms of freckles and age spots and uneven um, skin tone. And that comes a lot from the UVA sun exposure. Okay. I'm so glad you mentioned that because when you go to use sunscreen, obviously there are, there's not just one kind of sunscreen. There are different kinds of sunscreen. And then you see UVA and UVB. And I think mm -hmm. that probably a lot of people don't understand what the difference is. Can you explain that to us? Yeah. So to understand more about sunscreen, we have to understand sun science. So the sun emits UV rays. There are two types of UV rays. There's UVA and there's UVB. UVB um, 
causes redness and burning in your skin. Uh, it also causes DNA mutations that lead to skin cancer. Um, it, it accounts for 5% of the sun rays uh, and it penetrates through the atmosphere a lot more so actually because of the thinning ozone layer that we're going through. Um, UVB rays are also more intense between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So at that time, if you can avoid the sun and stay in, or if you must, of course, wear sunscreen, but that's when that's the time when the rays are most harsh for UVB. Um, and of course, when you're at higher altitudes, so like, you know, if you're hiking and you're upper, you're higher in, in elevation, you're closer to the atmosphere. And like mm -hmm. I had mentioned, UVB rays penetrate through the atmosphere. So when you're looking for a sunscreen, do you, um, do you then want to find some, a sunscreen that protects against both? Yeah. That's so the number, the number on the sunscreen, the SPF number, that number measures the protection against UVB rays. Um, for instance, a sunscreen level of 15 protects your skin and blocks 93% of UVB rays. We always recommend at least 30 or 35 because then it's going to be blocking 97% of UVB rays. After that, it's like very small increments of protection. So you're looking at like SPF 50 would only protect 98%. So it's like very, very small after that. But it's important to notice that the number on the sunscreen, the SPF, is a measure of protection against UVB only. Mm. But we also have UVA rays. Right. And that accounts for 95% of the UV rays that we're getting from the sun. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, but there's no number for that. You just want to make sure that you're buying a sunscreen that also protects from UVA, right? Yeah. So UV, uh, UVA is going to be your UV rays that cause photo aging. So mm -hmm. um, your lines and wrinkles and loss of elasticity in your skin. And if you are easily um, tanning, if you're pigmenting easily, which with Asian skin, we, we, we do, you're going to want to look for UVA protection. Now, the thing with UVA is it passes through clouds and glass. So when you walk outside, you wake up one day and it's a cloudy, gloomy day, UVA is still there. A lot of people think, well, I don't have to wear my sunscreen today. There's no sun out. Right. Well, the UVAs are still coming through, even though UVB is not. Mm -hmm. So when you're, um, so all in all, if you are uh, needing protection from pigmenting, if your big concern is that you get dark when you're out in the sun, you're going to want to look for UVA protection. And a lot of that would be your zinc oxide. That's going to be the main ingredient that you're going to look for in your sunscreen. If you are getting red and you're burning when you get sun exposure, you're going to want to look for UVB protection, and that will be your titanium dioxide. Okay, I, I know that the some, you know how some sunscreens leave this layer like a white layer on your face? A white cast. That comes from zinc oxide. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people don't like that, um, but uh, you know, to protect against photo damage and pigmentation, you're gonna want that. Sorry, so you do, you do want that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do. Um, it is a downside of zinc oxide that it ca causes that white cast. Um, again, like, you know, with sunscreen, it's, it's so hard to say. The question is, what is your skin type? Um, if you are a darker skin type, you probably will need more UVA protection, which again, your main ingredient would be your zinc oxide. If you're burning, if you're turning red, you're going to want UVB protection, but there's also, you know, broad spectrum, right there. You can cover the both of them. Um, zinc oxide, UVA, titanium dioxide, UVB, not okay. to confuse things more. Right. But there's also, there's also chemical sunscreens. What I just talked about was just your mineral. 
So um, your chemical sunscreens will be all those like fancy ingredients such as um, homosalate, mm. alobenzone, oxybenzone. So if you see that, that's going to be your chemical. And what chemical sunscreens are is the sunscreen absorbs into your skin and the UVAs or the UV rays also absorb into your skin and do and through chemical reaction, these um, it, it will convert the UV to heat and that heat will dissipate from your skin. So I would say if you're a more active person and you're not really suffering from pigmenting and tanning in the sun, you're totally fine using chemical sunscreen. And that's actually the one I use. And just to give an example, this is this is the sunscreen that I use, La Roche Posay, and it's a chemical, chemical sunscreen. So the hmm. thing is my skin is more fair. So I don't worry too much about pigmenting because I burn more. So chemical sunscreens are good for me. Um, it might not be for others. So that's something that, you know, you can consult about or, you know, you like research and read up on on what it is that you need. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, I like. I use that same sunscreen and I use some uh, some other ones like I, I love trying new things. I don't like it drying out my skin. I didn't even realize that there was a chemical sunscreen. Um, mm -hmm. Are those normally more expensive? Because like that sunscreen is not cheap compared to, you know, the regular stuff you can buy at, at a store. Um, you know, I don't really look a lot at prices. I kind of go for what works well with my skin, mm -hmm. um, which we'll get into in a little bit later. But, you know, if you're more oily, you're not going to want an oil based sunscreen. You're going to want something more water based. Um, if you're dry, you want something thicker. So okay. it's really just understanding your skin type, your needs and what your skin is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about what happens after we're not good about protecting our skin and we get those spots because sometimes it's um, like, I wish I would have listened to my mom. Uh, I didn't start wearing sunscreen until I was 50. So I've got like, you know, and a lot of Asian women have this, like I have got this dark spot here that I'm working on. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, we've, you know, some people think freckles are cute. Some people hate them. Some people don't want any of this stuff on their face. Once you get it, Kim and be nam and you know all these age spots or sun spots or whatever you want to call them, but we see all these spots. What can you do? Can you do something to take them away? Um, well, the first line of treatment is always going to be your sunscreen. I know we just talked about that a lot, but uh, if you don't wear your sunscreen, you're going to get darkening of those pigmentation. Number two, um, it would be skincare. So there are skincare products out there that will help to lighten up your pigmentation, um, indirectly care for your skin that will help with pigmentation. And then you get to laser treatments, which are really, really great for pigmented issues. Yeah, I'm, I'm now a really big fan. When, when we first started hearing about, for instance, laser facials and laser this and laser that, I really didn't understand it. And I thought laser, meaning heat, might damn it. You know what I mean? It just didn't kind of make sense to me. So, <clears throat> excuse me, could you talk about some of the um, treatments that are uh, available? Um, and I know that we have, like, you don't recommend anything you wouldn't do yourself, right? And so yeah. there's this thing that you also do um, uh, at, at, the, at the shop. Could you tell me what it is? Um, we're going to show some video of it, too. Yeah, of course. Um, so Natropeel is one of my favorite treatments. I think this is a great maintenance and monthly treatment that I get. Uh, what I'm trying to show you right there is that I'm cleaning my face and that, that piece of paper is white. So this laser treatment is great for skin detoxing and skin cleansing. It really helps with decreasing oil production, evening out your skin tone, um, smoothing it out and giving you a very natural glow. Uh, from the products that we use every day, from the envir environmental pollutants in the air, uh, we really need to just clean our skin out and regular cleansers don't do that. Now I'm cleaning my skin right now and what I'm showing you is all the dead skin cells that 
are removed from my face right after the treatment. Do you see all that dark? Wow. Yeah. That, yeah. That's my dead skin cell. And we can't clean that ourselves at home. So this is a really, really great maintenance treatment for you to just really get into your pores um, and clean out all that dirt, the oil that's built up from mm -hmm. all the things that we use in everyday pollutant in the air. Yeah, I tried it and I I loved it. And I was so surprised that you I thought my face was clean. And then we went and did that and 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 we cleaned it and it wasn't clean. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in your pores and on your on your the surface of your skin that that you don't realize is there. Um, can you talk about you know that cold that black stuff that was on your face before they use the, the laser so that people understand yeah. what, what that is? Uh, so that is a um, bamboo charcoal mask. What it does is, it, I mean, it has great, great like growth factors and antioxidants, and it helps to stimulate collagen in conjunction with the laser heat that we're introducing into your skin. Um, I know you mentioned this earlier, like you're afraid that like the extra heat from the laser is going to cause pigmentation to worsen. Well, this is a very light exfoliating laser treatment. The heat is there, but it's not, um, it's not lingering on your skin. And it's, you know, within that duration of maybe 15 minutes. So not too much heat, but what it does is it, you know, helps to cleanse the skin out and also at the same time, increase your stimul uh, collagen production. And then so uh, this is like one of the examples for um, the natural peel treatment. This is actually two weeks after the one treatment. It's really great too, as I had mentioned, it decreases oil production. So it's really great for hormonal acne breakouts. Um, I suffer from that every single month. So that's why this is actually one of my favorite treatments in addition to the fact that you can see the dead skin cells wiped off your face immediately after. Um, this is actually my brother. He had, you know, some breakouts. Um, his skin wasn't as clean. And this was also just about a month and a half after one treatment of Natropeel. And <clears throat> this is another patient of mine. Uh, I don't know that you can really see it as well, but the top photos is the before and the bottom photos are after, or I'm sorry, the left side is uh, before and the right side is after. And this is just me showing you the glow that you get from just getting one treatment of natural peel. Um, and I, I think we have some other photos here of um, some of your patients who have undergone perhaps a combination of different treatments. Yes. Um, so there's also the cool peel treatment. Now the cool peel is a more intense laser treatment, not too much. It would, I would still consider it like a mild laser treatment. It's more for skin resurfacing. So my patient here, um, felt dull. She needed the tightening. She needed to brighten her skin and to resurface it. So that's what the cool peel does. It does introduce a little bit more heat. So I probably wouldn't recommend it for those who have massive pigmentation issues. But if you have superficial freckles um, or sun damage, then this would be a really great treatment to just brighten up your skin. This is also another patient of mine. This is after one treatment of natural peel and cool peel in the same session. I think this is about a month apart. So you can see how her skin's brightened up. It's less dull. It's more tight and she's glowing. Yeah. And, and, um, I don't know if people can, well, I, I see it very clearly under her eyes and I'm telling mm -hmm. you, if you could create something that does anything for the under eyes, you know, but I can see it clearly on her face that it makes a difference. I don't know what that is. Um, mm -hmm. whether it's taking away any of that, the dark circles or the bags that then create shadows that make it look like they're dark circles. Um, but you could really see it on her. Yeah. So again, the cool peel treatment is a laser resurfacing treatment. So you are, you are 
helping with rough texturing and smoothing out the skin. So that's why you see an improvement in her under eyes because she was dull before, there was a lot of dead skin cells that needed to re be removed and that helped to brighten up her complexion. Mm -hmm. And then what are we looking at here? Yeah, so this is another one of my patients. Um, she had a natropeel and a session of Pico. So the Pico is really good for pigmentation issues in Asian skin um, and darker skin types, really. So this is just an example of how you can see her skin's brighten up. Her dark spot, her melasma is lighting up as well. And this is after just one session of natural mm. peel and of Pico. So the more that you're doing it, the more we can um, address the issue and help with your, you know, skin problems and concerns. So it is recommended to do a series of treatments and not just the one. Right. But that you can see that that is just the result of one treatment. Mm -hmm. So everyone's skin is different. I don't want people to think that it's magic. Like, you know, your, your skin may react differently, right? It may take a series of treatments. Uh, you may not see something so dramatic. I know that a friend of mine went, went there and um, in one treatment, she saw something very dramatic. And I know that you can mm -hmm. also work on the neck as well. And so it is personalized service. It depends on your skin and how you react to some of the treatment. Uh, there is, oh, look, do you know, do you remember Lynn? So Lynn was, is, is a viewer and now a friend of mine from Virginia. And she flew over and came in for treatments after we talked to Dr. Kwa last time. Uh, mm -hmm. But she's on with us. Hi, Lynn. Good to see you. Um, someone yeah. is asking if this is for ladies only. Do you have yeah. male patients? We do. Um, I mean, guys, guys need skincare too. I mean, you need, <laughs> everyone needs, um, you know, skin improvements and to, to always keep young and healthy. So there are a lot of male patients, but more so female, of course, because we care about our skin a lot more and we're more careful with it. Right. And, and, you know, um, when people have actual problems, so when you're not just talking about beauty, but even men, I mean, just how you present yourself, uh, your face, if you have a lot of marks, if you, I mean, that affects your confidence, right? So whether you're dealing with work or with friends, so uh, of course, skin is skin. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. Um, it it also helps you if if you're you're in, into that. Don't be embarrassed by it. I love men yeah. with good skin. I love men with good skin. Okay. Now that we've talked about the problems that the sun can cause, and we've talked about your responsibility in using sun protection, and we've talked about treatments for when you're not so good at that sun protection and you get these spots, let's talk about like regular skincare. So I'm trying to teach my daughter because, you know, when we're young, we, we have no worries. We don't think about getting old. And we don't always take care of our skin the way that we should. So let's talk about um, what's, you, what's your what's your regimen? What do you what do you do for your skin? Yeah. Um, well, to start off, aging is a natural process in life. We all age. Um, there are intrinsic and extrinsic factors in aging. So in your twenties, that's when it starts. Um, your collagen is going to be depleted. Um, a lot of it has to do with, I mean, not a lot of it, but intrinsically it's genetics, right? So, um, I, what I kind of say to my patients is look at, look at your mom, you know, see how, how she ages. That's, that's a pretty good indication for how you will age extrinsically, which is the biggest percentage in our aging, um, these things are more controllable, but it does cause aging. So things like sun exposure, that's the main thing. That 90% of intrinsic factor in aging would be from your sun. So if you're wearing sunscreen, you're already doing a, like a big favor to yourself um, and helping with that aging. Other things are gonna be environmental stressors, pollution in the air, lifestyle choices. If you're drinking, if you're not sleeping, if you're smoking, that will mm -hmm. play a role in aging. Oh, and stress too. Um, 
So yeah, uh, my skincare. Uh, what should we talk about first? Like, well, are you? I mean, what 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 is the big mis mistake that you think people make when when it comes to skincare? I guess that kind of ties into what I think your basic skincare products should at least be sitting in your shelf or on your, on your tabletop. Uh, I think a big mistake, and I think you've mentioned it before was not wearing sunscreen early enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, sunscreen is one number two, I would say moisturizing, uh, our skin thins out. It gets dry. It needs moisture. Just like plant needs water. We need moisturizing on our face and, when you're feeling, I mean, when you look dehydrated, your lines and wrinkles are going to be more defined. So you need that moisturizer. So uh, moisturizing, sunscreen. And I think the third product, at least these three, you need to have on your tabletop and use every day would be your cleanser. Hmm. And the cleanser is important because when well, you go all day outside, you need to clean your skin from all the stuff that you're exposed to. It's kind of like washing your hands before you eat. You just, you know, you need to, to, to cleanse your skin. Yeah. Do you wash your face in the morning? Cause I know some girls, some ladies, like they, they do both. Like they'll, yeah, so they'll I, cleanse this, they'll wash their face at night, but they also wash it in the morning. It's actually best to do it both in the morning and at night. Um, in the morning, you're basically cleaning off the products that you used last night that you went to sleep with. You're starting with a fresh look, a fresh feel, and then you're applying all these products, your sunscreen, whatever it may be. You're going outside, you're going through your day. So when you come back home at night, you need to cleanse again. So I always do cleanser in the morning and in the evening. Mm -hmm. So what are the steps? You do cleanser, then what? Uh, How often do you exfoliate? <clears throat> exfoliation that's um that's a that's a different product that i use so i exfoliate once or twice a week mm. my skincare routine is this um i don't use makeup remover like the wipes i mm -hmm. think that it's damaging to the skin and i think that um it damages your skin barrier. So what I use is oil cleanser to remove my makeup. I just like rub the oil into my face and remove it that way. After oil cleansing, I always follow it up with a second cleanser. So I double cleanse oh. because, well, if you think about it, right, what is oil? Like when you put oil on a pan and then you go and rinse it with water, is the oil still there? Yes, yeah. of course. Oil is going to stick on that surface. What you're going to want to do is wash that down with soap and water. And that is why I double cleanse because that oil is going to stay if I don't. So I oil cleanse, I use a second cleanser. Um, sometimes I incorporate a toner and uh, you, but usually it would be moisturizer and then um, exfoliating once to one to two times a week. Mm-hmm. And we should also add, and this is also something I am guilty of. I do not drink enough water. <coughs> my mom yeah. has, my mom just tells me, and I'll tell you what, it makes such a big difference. So you need to moisturize from the inside out. And I can really see a difference on my face when I consciously drink more water. I don't think, I think most of us probably don't drink the recommended amount of water. We probably don't drink enough water. I, I know I absolutely do not. It's good for your health, but it is so good for your skin that if you really want to change the look of your skin, start drinking more water, like a lot more water. That's really, really important. Um, okay. We got a, a question here. Do you recommend a face steamer and how often should you use it? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, it depends on like how you're using it. If you're, I used to use face steamer and then I used to use those, um, what do you call it? It's like a, one of those suctioning products to help clean out your pores. But what I've come to realize is because these products are sold over the counter, they're not really, um, 
they're not really safe to use because you can cause more skin damage. So in terms of face steaming, like what are you trying to do? Like, are you trying to exfoliate your skin? Um, are you trying to remove something? Most of my face steaming is coming from the hot shower that I get and that's where I'm cleansing. So um, if you're going to a professional and getting like a hydrofacial, then you know, that's that'll help. But if you're doing it at home and you don't really know what you're doing, you you're basically opening up your pores and not really cleaning anything and um, can you can worsen it. Okay, so if you are using a face steamer, what you're doing is you're opening up your pores. You are. So then you yeah. right, you're going to want um you're going to want to cleanse the skin after, yeah? Yes. That Otherwise would, that you're sweating be. and you're leaving it on your skin. Mhm. Mm um and then I would imagine since you're adding this heat and opening it up and all that stuff that you also have to um, moisturize afterward. Yes. Okay. So th that's, a, that's a really good question though, because I think, you know, people who've gone to facials and they use a steamer on you and you just assume, oh, that's what you should be doing. But you're right. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're not doing the correct things afterward, you could actually be damaging your skin and not doing, you know, the good that, that you think you are. Um, okay. There are a couple of other, um, um, procedures, uh, not actually procedures. What, what am I want to try to call them, but they're treatments that you can get that are, um, less invasive. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to share things that you can do to make your skin look better without going under the knife, right? Mm -hmm. Without like the Botox injection so that you can get rid of those wrinkles. So doing things that are a little more natural, give you a more natural uh, look and, and what I think are better than actually doing things that are more invasive. Um, let's talk about the um, microneedling, which can you explain again for anyone who might have missed the last time we talked about this, what that actually is? What are you doing to your skin? And first of all, what is it? Microneedling. <laughs> yes. So microneedling is um, introducing these microneedles, puncturing your skin through that causing injury. And in response to that, like your skin is going to heal itself. So um, you're going to be helping with rough texturing, acne scarring. Um, it's a great anti-aging treatment. Um, it helps to brighten your skin. But the thing that I find about microneedling is if you don't have patience for the results, uh, it's, it's going to be hard for you to accept. Collagen production is going to take, you know, a few months down the line for for to um, improve. And a lot of people are like, Oh, I did it one time, I don't really see anything. But that's like why we recommend doing a series and giving it some time. Um, but it's it really is great for like your lines and wrinkles, tightening of your skin, and um, collagen production. Sorry. I think. Sorry. No, oh, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like when people exercise, you like, you can't just exercise once and say, I don't see any results, right? right. There are just some things that will take time. Um, and so, you know, when you're doing something like, for instance, plastic surgery, or when you're doing something like um, Botox, yeah, the results are more immediate. They're not as natural. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. to so me, I don't think they look as good. So what microneedling does is it stimulates your own collagen production. We all have collagen. It just depletes over time. So it's more of a natural treatment because it's stimulating your own. Whereas with Botox, with fillers, you're injecting a foreign substance into your skin and you're getting immediate results, but it's not yours. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Um, and microneedling, like, again, it takes some time, but it's more of a natural treatment. Mm -hmm. And great for anti-aging and rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. So I know that there are many products out there. You can actually do it at home. Um, I don't think that you get the same results. And isn't there also a danger of actually damaging your skin? Because, you know, they've got those rollers. You can buy them for not very much at all and do it at mm -hmm. home yourself. So what's the difference between doing it at home and actually going in to get a treatment? Yeah, so the rollers that you get over the counter, 
um, they they don't go evenly on your skin. So you might be thinner in one area, you might be, you know, more plump and more thicker in other areas. And when you're just using the roller, you're just going at one single depth all over your entire face. So if you're not really certain of what you're doing, you can cause damage and you can cause sensitivity and trauma to your skin. Um, microneedling is safe in a professional setting because, you know, we're able to look at your skin. We know at what depth we, we can go at to help improve your skin concerns. Um, and on top of that, you know, even with skincare products, if you're doing too much of one thing, you can oversensitize your skin, cause trauma, and, and it you're just going to cause more damage to your skin. So like, you know, with that home exfoliation that I say I, I do once or twice, um, a week, that's, that's pretty much about the limit. Like if you do any much more than that, you might, you just will be damaging your skin further. Mm. And so a then, lot of it is just understanding. Yeah. Um, the RF microneedling, which is different from then just microneedling. And I've done that at the office with Dr. Kwa and I, I, I really liked it. I'm, I am a wimp when it comes to pain. I don't like needles. I don't have pain tolerance. I don't like to do any of those things. I'm a scaredy cat. I just, I'm scared of all of those things. And I'm very afraid of like what's going to happen to my face. So can you talk about, is it painful? Um, and for people who don't have any pain tolerance, what can you do for them? Well, because microneedles um, are going into your skin, of course, we numb you first. Um, so I, I don't think that you're going to feel a lot of pain from it. It's more like just feeling the pressure of the needles on your skin. So microneedling, um, itself is, you know, causing the injuries, helping to tighten up your skin, the RF, the radio frequency, which is added into our treatment helps to add that heat and increase um, the collagen production quicker than if we were just doing a plain microneedling with no heat. Okay. Uh, and then just from personal experience, if I could just share, like, I'm so scared of that pain because come with you. No, no, I just can't. I, and, and I'm very afraid of needles. So the first, uh, couple of times the doctor put that numbing cream on my face and then I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. You must sometimes yeah. get the numbing cream. It, it can feel weird. And so it can. I, it'll yeah. last a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, you, it just it felt so weird. And then I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to try it. In fact, it was you. I came in and had you do a session for me. And I said, you know, I'm, a, I'm just going to try it without the numbing cream. And I was fine. Like, I don't know what I was so scared of. You know, yeah, it's, it's I think very, it's very light and, and it doesn't like last a super long time. And I think it's actually better to do it without the numbing cream. So that treatment that I did for you is a cool peel um, without the numbing cream. So uh, we so we can let's let's talk about the treatments again. Okay. Natural peel. Natural peel is great for skin detoxing, cleansing. If you have hormonal breakouts, if you're oily, if you have large pores, if you just need a good cleanse. Great monthly maintenance treatment. It's it's a light exfoliant that you can do every month. Cool peel. It's a a more intense um, laser treatment than compared to the natural peel, but that will be your laser resurfacing. So if you have superficial sun damage, if you have a dull look, if you um, have um, like rough texturing issues, cool peel is a good treatment for you. Microneedling is more of your rejuvenation, your anti-aging, your fine lines and wrinkles um, on a deeper level. So like I had mentioned, cool peel, superficial, microneedling a little deeper. So that's why it takes more patience because you're working at a deeper level of the skin and that needs some time to improve. Mm -hmm. Whereas cool peel, you see it right away. So there was um, a time or two I did a cool peel for you and we don't, uh, you don't have to have um, numbing for that. But with microneedling, you will always have numbing. Okay. All right. Um, and what I like is you're able to do more, more than one treatment. I like combining, uh, treatments that way. Right. And then, you know, when you get to my age, 
you're not just locking, you're not just looking about the the spots on your face, but you also the fine lines and, and the other wrinkles that are starting starting to set in. Um, so anyway, okay, we've got a question here. Okay, someone is asking, uh, they're thanking us for the great information. May I ask how we should exfoliate the skin at home? What brand do you recommend for Asian skin? Yeah, actually, let me just pull the one that I use. This is one of my favorite. Um, and we have it at our place. So <laughs> this is called a microderm uh, polish. It has a grainy, sandy texture to it. And what that sand does is it's it's helping to cleanse the skin and, you know, clean away the dead skin cells. Um, and I definitely would recommend this treatment. This is the exfoliating. So you're going to look for, um, what is it? Exfoliating scrub. So scrubs are really great for um, cleaning that dead skin cell and brightening your, your face. And um, I'm just asking this because I think that uh, this just like my own thinking. When people exfoliate, I think that sometimes they feel like if it's not super rough, that they're not, they're not getting as much out of it, that they're not doing it right. Like they want the, um, it looks like nutshells, it look, you know, like really heavy stuff for real exfoliation. Um, mm -hmm. Is that the case or no? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, you don't want to do too much to cause damage to your skin barrier. Um, if you're wanting a little bit more intense scrub, let's just say using this product, then you can scrub your skin dry versus scrubbing it when it's like wet. Oh. Um, yeah, because that way you'll just you'll feel more of the sandy texture and um it's you know it'll it'll be rougher that way but i wouldn't overdo anything because it can cause damage to your skin okay so now i have a question and i don't know is it just a marketing thing i mean is there a difference between eye cream and just regular moisturizer like why do i have to spend more money on an eye cream when it's just the skin that's here and I have moisturizer that I'm using here. Is there anything special about eye cream that, that, that we should be using or is a moisturizer good for your whole face? Um, well, I use an eye serum. I think the ingredients are a little different because your skin is thinner here. It's more sensitive than the rest of your face. Um, so when you're using eye serums or any eye products, it's more targeted for the eye area than for the rest of your face. You know, like I mentioned, the skin is thinner here, more sensitive, whereas let's say like your cheeks are more thicker and, um, the absorption will be different. Mm, okay. So, so it does make a difference. Okay. <laughs> um, how about this? So there's, um, there's serums and then there's moisturizers. Mm -hmm. Like what is the difference? Like it's all stuff you're putting on your face, right? Uh, yeah. Is, is there a layer, um, a layering? Um, like what's the last, what's the first thing you put on? What's the last thing you put on? Yeah. So um, cleanser is always going to be your first, cleansing your face. Um, if you use a toner, that would be your second step. After that would be your, your thin serums, your um, spot treatments. And then you would follow it up with moisturizing because moisturizing is more uh it's thicker and then if you know it's you're out during the day then then you would put your sunscreen so when in doubt thinnest to thickest and the reason why is if you're putting on something thick that's going to affect the absorption of anything that comes after so you're going to want thinner products first very good okay so the thinner the product that goes on first thicker goes on after because otherwise yeah, so you're kind of creating a barrier right Yes, um, it changes the absorption of things. And with that being said, it does make a difference when you're packing on five, six, seven products at a time versus like um, spacing it out. So there are products that you can do just like during the day, some at night, or you can space it out like every other day, every other couple of days. Um, and that's what I tend to do with my skin because I use I use a range of products, but I'm um, I'm more so using the products based on my current skin concerns. So if I'm breaking out, I'm going to want to use 
salicyclic acid to help decrease oil production and help target my acne. If I'm feeling dull and I need a little extra cleansing, I will use my exfoliant. Um, and so every single product is going to be based on your skin concerns. But I have to say this, you need to use your skincare product for at least two weeks to a month before you can decide if it works for you or not. And as you know, there's a lot of skincare products out there. So much. There's over the counter. There's medical grade. How do you know which one is which? Well, the thing with this is it's hard to tell. Like one thing might work for one person and not the next. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a trial and error, but you do have to give it a little time to do what it's supposed to do and to see if it works before you move on to the next. So consistency is important. Right. Very good. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's the same thing with when you do these treatments that you can, you cannot expect to see instant results. Mm -hmm. It's like exercising. Just because <laughs> I exercise earlier today doesn't mean that I'm going to see it in my waist right away. Right. And you really have to yeah. keep at it. Um, someone's asking about um, how much do, do the peel treatments cost? I mean, there's a range and, and I think that you guys, I guess it depends, right? Uh, yeah, it depends. Um, you know, we do have specials and promos once in a while. Um, we've got memberships going on and then we've got packages. So based on just your skin concern, uh, which we can figure out through consultation, then that'll be the best guide for you in terms of the treatment plan and cost. Yeah. So um, because some people will want to do more than one, depending on um, whatever, you know, after they take a look at your skin, you may need three or four, in which case then you might buy a package and it'd be cheaper than if you only went there once or twice. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Uh, someone is already a big fan of the um, the product that you're using there. <clears throat> oh, this is a great question. Uh, I've seen many beauty bloggers talk about retinol. Would you recommend using retinol? Retinol is really good for increasing skin cell turnover. So your lines and wrinkles, even pigment, um, it helps to quicken the pace of bringing new cells to the upper layer of your skin. Personally, retinol doesn't work for me. I don't see a difference when I use it. So I turn to things like lactic acid to brighten my skin or um, AHAs to increase skin cell turnover because for some reason, retinol doesn't work on my skin. Um, again, that's kind of where you try a product at least two weeks to a month to see if it works for you. And of course, pay attention to your response to like to your skin. If you're turning red, if you're getting irritated, if it hurts, that's probably a good sign. It's not compatible for your skin. Mm -hmm. um, but I would give it some time. Now, d doesn't your skin sometimes, I don't know, like purge <laughs> itself sometimes when you're, um, depending on what it is that you're trying to treat or what it is, the product, the type of product that you're using, that sometimes when you first use it, like a couple days after that, you might break out, you might see that your, your skin goes through, a, you know, some changes, but then after that, mm -hmm. well, after that, then it looks better. Like, does yeah. your skin sometimes go through this thing where... It starts purging it all the bad stuff out? So purging, um, is it can be just your skin is cleansing itself. Um, so if you are seeing that you're breaking out a lot, even like just over time, you just you keep seeing these breakouts, your skin's getting worse, it's not helping. Again, that's a good sign the skin isn't, I mean, the skincare product isn't working for you. But purging, purging is just cleansing itself. So after a natural peel, you can purge, you can get breakouts, but that's just your skin cleansing itself um, from, you know, the treatment and the products that you're using. Right. So it's, it's normal. Okay. Um, we're, we're just about out of time, but I, yeah, I have to show you this comment. Okay. Uh, em đọc tiếng Việt được không? I can't really see. Okay. <laughs> Cuối chương trình yêu cầu Cát Linh hát một bài. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I have time to sing a song. <clears throat> so Maybe where can... Maybe the next time. Oh, next time? Okay. 
um, where where can they see some of your singing? Like, can they search you somewhere? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, videos on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're kind of old. It's been a while since you know I've been on stage. I'm here and there, but not all the time. Um, and you know, Asia hasn't. You know, they they stopped producing. So right. So you, you do a lot of live in. shows. You do a lot of live shows. Yuma, if, if pe people can actually um, search for you and they'll see you on YouTube. Um, okay. I know people are going to ask, so is there a way that they can, um, and this is not a paid advertisement. I want to make sure that everyone knows that they are not, this is not a, a paid advertisement. Um, but if they want to get uh, in touch with you or find out more about the products, um, yeah. where can they, where can they yeah, go? Yeah. So we have a website um, at the place that I work at. It's butelaseraesthetics.com, and that's spelled B-E-A-U-T-E. -E. Laser Aesthetics is A-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C-S.com. You can also call us. Um, I believe the phone number is, uh, let me see. I've got these memorized. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the um I'm gonna put the website up on on there. <coughs> and if anyone has questions, you could also contact me, and I'll pass along the information as well. Um, uh, Kat, Kat is also on Facebook. You can find her on there as well, and you'll be able to look for. Her. So we we can't make her we can't make her sing tonight, but maybe <laughs> maybe next time when when you're prepared for it, maybe just a few. A few lines. Toin gam gam a goldie gam a goldie am. Um, gosh, I don't even know what's what. Uh, what kind of music do you like? Is... When you sing, you sing. Kim, I'm hack, I'm hack nhạc Việt, phải không? I do. Yeah. So it's just been a while since I've like sang. So like, I can't think of anything at the top of my mind right now. That happens all the time. Just like you know, when you go to karaoke, tự nhiên không quên nhớ bài nào hết trơn á. Nhưng mà ngồi ở nhà. Thì nhớ bài này, bài này, bài này hay, bài này hay. And then people put you on the spot and suddenly you don't remember know. anything. <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah. Um, okay, so thank you so much. Um, but uh, there's the website. You can also find her on Facebook. Um, yes. Let her know. Let her know that, uh, that you saw her uh, on my YouTube channel. And uh, we'll, you can, you know maybe go in for a consult and talk to her about your different skincare needs. But sunscreen, wash your face at night, people. If you ever go to bed with your makeup on, you are fired. No one should be doing that ever. I don't care how tired you are. Wash your face. Drink lots of water and moisturize, right? It really comes oh, yeah, down to right. that. I didn't get to show you um, the cleansing of my makeup brushes. But... Oh, that's actually, that's really important. Can you show us that before we go? That is yeah, so important. Okay, let me do the setup here. Because, um, can you see that? I bet you, yeah, I, I bet you a lot of people, when was the last time you cleaned your makeup brushes? How You'd often be surprised. Should, how often should we be cleaning our makeup brushes? All right. Um, you should definitely be get cleaning them after all the treatments that you get, you know, laser treatments, microneedling, especially because that's, you know, causing injury in your skin. You don't want to introduce bacteria, bacteria in your skin uh -huh. from your, uh, your brushes. But I would say if you're a heavy user, like every, every month. Um, so this is, this is just soap and water. I put a white paper so that you can kind of see that it's clear. Can you see that? Yeah. I don't know if that's like covering it. Okay. Yep. So I, I do the, just, I use the same thing. I do the same thing to clean brushes. Okay. I love it. So can you see it with the, I think it's off. On no, I'll just use No, 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 no. You, you were good. Move it back. I was good. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So this is me cleansing. And do you see how dirty that is? That's where my makeup brush. Yeah. And that, that water was like super clear before. So you're going to want to wash your brush often um, because look at all that. And you're putting that on your face like, I know. all the time. So you don't want to clean your skin. And see how fast that is? I, I did the same thing. I use, I, I use something very similar. And you just dip it in. You don't need anything special, right? Mm -hmm. A little soap and water. Uh, I do. Uh, the soap that I use is like a makeup 
uh, cleansing soap. Um, I just got it off of Amazon. This, these products I did as well. Um, so they're, they're easy to find, but it's just important to be washing your makeup brushes, even your bed sheets, pillowcases, anything that's touching your face, because you don't want to reintroduce all that bacteria. Um, and one of my tips and tricks is after I clean my face, I always use a new face towel. I never use oh. a used towel. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Girl, every you single must, you must do a lot of laundry. <laughs> I do, <laughs> but it's uh, it's all in the care of my skin and beauty. So I take the time to do so. Very nice. I I love that. And um, because you're an Asian female, I'm I'm, I'm hoping that that you don't mind. Uh, everyone is commenting on how, how beautiful you are. Uh, please look her up so you can see some of her singing. Also, she's not just beautiful. She's also very smart. She is an RN. Um, and that's also very important when I go to a place uh, to do anything on my face, especially if you're doing anything that's puncturing your skin or anything like that, or using, using things that actually could cause damage, you want someone who's licensed, someone who knows what they're doing, uh, because just one face, not the face, just got one face there. You'd be very, very careful. Um, but and how, how old are you? I am 33. And how long have you been like obsessive about taking care of your skin? I mean, has that been like a lifelong thing for you? Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, beauty has always been like important to me, but I don't think I've taken care of it as much as I did um, until like a few years ago. And mm. more so now because I'm in the field and I understand more about the different products and what your skincare should look like. So I'm a lot more, I'm a lot better now than I was before. Very good. Okay. So yep, that happens to all of us. Remember, I was, uh, what, 50 when I started doing this. Okay, here we go. Little relaxing music. Kathleen, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to have to have you back on because we have to get a song out of you. Um, and maybe <laughs> next time, because I know, for instance, and, and I'm, I'm not uh, shy about uh, sharing it, I like to look at pictures and video when I get treatment just so that I can see, right? Mm -hmm. What we've done, the before and afters. So maybe next time we can share some of those videos and pictures just to, um, yeah. you know, like we wouldn't talk about anything we wouldn't do ourselves, right? Right. Okay. Uh, why don't you so say goodbye to the audience? All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Kathleen, xin chúc các bác, cô chú và anh chị em một cuối tuần thật là vui và thoải mái. So cute. Thank you so much, Lena. <laughs> so cute. Keep practicing your Vietnamese, and everyone else, keep practicing your English. And we'll see you next time. Have a good night, everybody, and have a great day in Vietnam.